Hey, what is up, fellas? Just wanted to give you a quick little update on how this uh, new torch I built is working out. Working out pretty awesome. I'm basically uh, cleaning out this radiator right now, so I wanted to run the cell for a while. I've got it on full power with the amount of electrolyte that I have in there. Now, I could put a lot more electrolyte in there, but I don't want a super hot mix right now in case we find a leak somewhere. I'm kind of doing a little leak test also. I had the torch just sitting over here burning to kind of uh, burn the off gas. I don't want to accumulate a bunch of dangerous gas. Definitely happy with that flame out of that specific nozzle. That is about uh, 1300 some watts we're looking at there. I like to, to run the thing using the amperage setting because I know where my diodes are and all that and what the outlet and wall can handle. Right away I know when I'm at 20 amps, you need to chill out a little bit for uh, long burns. This electrolyzer you see here has somewhat of a staggered plate setup for uh, the purpose of cooling. Every other plate is longer than the other plate by I believe 20 millimeters. So you've got a one centimeter off or stand off there and that uh, promotes cooling I'm basically talking about this stuff here those cooling fins now I'm only using four bolts and quarter inch steel as my face plates to hold this thing together the face plates are dielectrically separated I use Tyvek tape because uh, Teflon tape just wasn't up to the job as you would tighten it up it would eventually conduct so there's a real good look at the cooling fins. Stainless steel is a horrible conductor, but I uh, wanted to do it anyway. What we're looking at right here is my diode array. I have three 50 volt diodes that are all rated at 25 amps a piece, connected in series. And basically what that does is gives us a 120 volt rectifier. Actually the voltage here in my garage is 125 volts. I'm really lucky. Quite privileged to have that. You don't see that often, but uh, that's what it is here in my town. I live in a rural area. Perhaps that's what it, the reason for that. And uh, that powers the electrolyzer, basically. That's uh, hooked directly to it. And the way we're powering this diode is using this knob right here. You see underneath here, those two little uh, triacs. I basically have taken apart another router speed controller and connected another triac in parallel and effectively doubled the rating of this router speed controller. It's basically, uh, I don't have a good, here we go. This is just your standard router speed controller. These things are very useful in experiments and um, running devices like this. So I have basically doubled the output. Oops, looks like I'm losing my uh, pump there. I want to keep that pump going so my uh, coolant's flowing. Very important in all this. It forces electrolyte into the cell. And what that does is mitigate something called polarization where bubbles accumulate on the plates and diminish the output of the cell. This whole setup is all about performance. It's not about efficiency at all. This is kind of like a dragster of electrolyzers. It definitely does not have a good MMW, but for its size, I bet you it cranks out twice as much gas for any other uh, high efficiency unit. You're probably on the verge of about uh, three and a half liters per minute right now. I don't want to test liters per minute on this on this yet because it's just too cold in the garage. It's about 60 degrees, 65 degrees, and you kind of want to do that at room temperature because it does affect the output a little bit, the size of the gas. I am getting no significant foam up. But at any rate, that's what this pump is doing. Not only is it forcing electrolyte into the cell, but it's also forcing electrolyte up into the radiator here and it's basically pumped back you can kind of see its flow right there the bubbles flowing quite nicely 
However, that is not conducive to cooling, I might add. You don't want high speed flow, it just heats the fluid. I'm basically just pumping it right back into the uh, intake side of the pump. That may appear stupid, but I'm sure the fluid is mixing enough in the pump that we are getting some cool fluid back into the electrolyzer. I thought that would produce the highest vacuum right there because not only of the Ventura effect, but because of the vacuum of the pump itself in that region. So I felt that would be the optimal place to reinsert the fluid. I was gonna have it going into the reservoir, but we wouldn't be getting that extra vacuum effect. And I guarantee you we're getting a good mix going on in there. So it's, and this thing's getting hot. So last time I checked the temperature junction, there was quite a bit of a difference. We're up to about 136 degrees. I need to get a fan going on this thing. At about 15 watts. But uh, that little transformer you see right there is running the cooling fans. This triac here is what is running the pump. You want to have something to be able to control the speed of the pump because if you have it turned up too high, it actually heats the electrolyte up by just friction of fluid alone. Let me get a fan on this thing before it overheats on us. Okay, fellas, and essentially this right here is why I chose not to install an actual cooling fan in the unit itself. It's because I can put way more power into my cooling than I ever could in a practical manner like this. I would not want a blower this big installed in this unit. But yet, because I own this fan, it's very practical to use the two in tandem. I'm getting more bang for my buck out of my fan for sure, and I'm reducing the size of my torch. I have a tremendous amount of cooling power with this little blower. And as I said, you would never install something that size in this torch. So that is why I never put a cooling fan on my radiator. Let's take a look at the temperature junction to determine the effectiveness of this uh, strategy. Maybe if I hit the front of the radiator. Showing 93 on the input. And 80 on the discharge, 82, 78. <laughs> so yeah, we're getting a significant amount of cooling there. And I'm starting to see some foam. That's worrying me. Turn that up a little bit, see if that helps. That, that's foaming over on me. I turned the blower up full power to knock that foam down. Hopefully that works. I'm worried about the cavitation of this pump. It's a plastic compeller. I don't know what the pump in that much uh, bubbles is gonna do to it. Hopefully not, nothing bad really. Making a cavitation noise. We are cooling off. Pretty much running at full power. I might as well turn the triac off. That's it, 13 amps. 1400 watts this thing's pretty much gonna heat my garage at this point <laughs> I can't feel a lot of heat coming off of it which is good so yeah that's what I'm doing here right now guys is I just want to flush all the filth out of this radiator because I only flushed it with acetone briefly oh yeah I'm foaming up fellas so even with potassium hydroxide I'm foaming here 